Hi hey guys, right, real quick and dirty video for you here. Um, I've been asked a lot of questions about this, so there's a couple of things I wanted to go over. Um, this is unfortunately a mobile phone job as well, because I lent my camera to someone and it's not come back. Um, but yeah, so I've been asked a few things about Genesis system um, over the last couple of weeks, and uh, I just wanted to touch on a few things. The first thing I've been asked is about jump starting vehicles fitted with these. Um, as a rule, um, the newer systems will survive it, these older ones will not, um, or may not, would be a better uh, way of saying it. Um, you can quite happily jump start vehicles with, this, with these systems on them. Um, you can probably do it once, a dozen times, three or four dozen times, but eventually you're going to get to the point where one of these is going to die. Um, we've looked at it. We believe that the, what we know what the cause is and we've spoken with um, reincarnation and um, they've kind of confirmed what we thought um, the problem is the voltage drip so when the power is turned on to these uh, the microcontroller in there which is a pick um, bear with me. i'm sure there's a naked one somewhere So yeah, the microcontroller, which is a PIC18 series, which you can see here, begins to boot. Um, we've used these chips ourselves, and we've seen this problem ourselves as well. Um, as the chip starts to boot, you turn the key, um, the voltage drops, and it causes a brownout condition. And for whatever reason, with these particular chips, this causes the loss of the contents of the flash memory on the chips. It wipes the program on the chip completely, and you are then stuffed. It's basically a chip with a bootloader. Um, I don't even think these have a bootloader on them. I think you just get back to bare metal. Um, so that will need programming. Now, reincarnation are really good if you can tell them exactly what vehicle it's come off of. And most of them, if you, if I zoom in here, most of them do have identifications as to what they came off of and they will reflash these for you. You have to excuse the state of my desk, it's been a busy week. Um, avoiding it. Gold standard is to get these back to reincarnation and get the flash updated on them um, to enable brownout detection. Um, if you know what you're doing, then in theory you could probably do that yourself. I wouldn't recommend it. Um, we have done it, um, but Unless you know your way around the chip, the PIC um, 18 series intimately, I wouldn't do it. Other one is to find this fuse. You'll generally have one like this somewhere. These are normally maxi fuses, the big stonking great things. And pull the fuse and then do your jump start. Uh, another possibility if you're going to do that is you may want to pop these two out as well. I believe that the ECU LSG gets its feed from these. Um, the best way out of it is to charge the vehicle uh, and get it to a state where you're not going to see that uh, massive voltage dip. If you've got an ambulance with these in, um, or even one of the RRVs, ambulance cars, the odds are you are going to have a high, pow high power charger on there somewhere, uh, somewhere along the lines of the Antar systems or similar. Um, most of these will get the vehicle to the point where it will start in about half an hour. Um, so maybe find that power lead. Um, it will be either a Casmall in the case of most of the common systems. It could be 110 volt, it could be 240. It will tell you on the lid of the charge port or it will be an Antares style system, um, which will be 240 volt. Get the charge leads and charge the vehicle, easy way. These do have a latent power draw even when they're asleep. Uh, right, next question. How do I tell what systems are being passed through? Um, well, the easiest way to look, it, to find out, is to look at the front of the modules. So inputs only come into the ECU on all the systems we've seen. Outputs come out of these output modules, fairly simple. So what we've got here, uh, I've got that the wrong way around, that's the ECU, that's the output module. So what we've got here is a list of what goes through, or what goes in. It doesn't necessarily go through. So we've got 
side lights, reverse gear, brake lights, ignition, engine running, dip beam, uh, CCTV vault, uh, speed trigger, rear suspension, handbrake, cab doors, side load doors, rear doors, panic strip, battery charger and ramp deployment. And then you've got analog inputs. So there's your ECU power on AM1. So yes, you would need to pull the smaller Molex out. Uh, chassis battery voltage, auxiliary battery voltage, and comms battery voltage. Incidentally, if you are removing any of the auxiliary batteries, you will want to tie these up to the chassis. So if you're removing the comms battery or the auxiliary battery and or and the auxiliary battery, you'll want to tie these up to the chassis battery because if you disconnect these and leave them floating, the ECU will complain about it and start doing strange things. Um, some vehicles, there are things that go through the system and are disabled. We've seen um, some of these with a headlight input uh, for high beam. You've got a dip beam in here, actually. Um, and then another ECU will actually drive the dip beam to the chassis. So if you take the ECU out, you lose your dip beam or you lose your high beam. Um, we've seen it done with a horn before. And I'm trying to think what else I've seen it done that way. But always have a look through here and see what's actually going through the system the same way if you're changing any wiring it's all here sometimes these labels do come off um, the ambulance maintenance staff are generally really good about making sure they stay with so if you've got a listing label check down around where all the gear sit you may your label may well be there and again last case last resort reincarnation can generally tell you um, so uh, next thing, system's not going to sleep. Check these inputs. These are LEDs and they will light up corresponding with what that input is doing. Um, most of these will not go to sleep unless everything is off. So if you've got a panel that's uh, staying on for five minutes or more, have a look at your ECU and see which lights are on and then go and chase what you need to do to turn it off. Um, it is simple as that. Something is turned on somewhere. Um, these are interchangeable so if you have a duff one of these you can change it with another one um, the only thing you have to match is the address setting on here audio we have audio outputs on here um, there are two they have their own independent volume controls um, quite frequently oh god that's quite glary isn't it Quite frequently on systems that have been out of trust for a while, you may find your audio is disconnected or these are wound down. We have seen audio amplifier failures on these. So if turning up the volume and reconnecting the speaker does nothing, check your speaker and if that fails, you've got an audio amp fail and you're gonna to need to uh, have a look at what's going on in here. So that's it really. Um, just a couple of questions I've been asked. Um, can you remove them? Yes, you can. Let me zoom you out. Can you remove them? Absolutely, you can. I've seen it done on vehicles that are still in service. Um, and you've got most of the information you need here to remove it. Um, my suggestion of doing it, of how to do it, would be to kill the power to these modules. Um, so this connector out, this fuse out, and check that everything that you want to work, chassis wise, still works. Um, once you know that there are no surprises in there, um, you can set about gutting all the uh, lighting and that. But be aware, there are some weird things that go through these. Um, let me see if I can find another one. Uh, that's a dead ECU. Um, so what have we got there so yep yeah, there's nothing really interesting on there that would cause you a problem I got one with a la no label always good. so here we've got some, an example of um, one that could potentially cause you problems in a conversion um, all your salon lights are on here, your spotlights are there, your rear door LED lighting's on here, and you've got your map light feeds to the cab, 
your step lights and the rear step courtesy lamps. So if you remove this, you could probably use a lot of lose a lot of lighting that you actually wanted to keep. Um, a lot of this stuff it works at a fairly automated level, so you could conceivably uh, move the control panel from the cab into the back and you know leave the circuits you want and ignore the rest again what i've said about the batteries does apply to this um but that way you could say remove this module for example which is all blue lights you could use remove that one which is all heating and other stuff that you're not likely to need and just keep this one which is all your lighting so you don't necessarily have to remove the hard the whole thing and again your circuits are quite clearly identified so it shouldn't be a problem Anyway, thanks for that. Take care.